The, 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 <laughs> Brevin Jordan. You thought about it. You're taking Brevin. Well, I always think about it because Brevin's my guy. Like, but then yeah. okay, that's, one of the guys that I, I have guy, been, that's why I didn't want you to think about it is because you know just like knee jerk reaction. But I mean, Brevin is just as good. I think he's top three most talented tight ends to come through Miami. But I underestimated even how good Jeremy Shockey was at Miami. Like that dude ran like a gazelle. He could, he was yeah. just so open all the time for Ken Dorsey. Um, well, I mean, he was, he was so good that he, he was dominant as a rookie. His best season in the NFL was his rookie year. Like that's how good he was. Yeah. I mean, and if he didn't have injury problems with the giants and if frankly, if he wasn't like a head case with the giants, like he would have like had such a better career. I mean, he did really good with the saints too. won a super bowl, caught a touchdown in the super bowl, but, um, Shockey's Shockey's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's uh he's Miami. He's a hurricane. Oh yeah. True. Let's see, was that his best year? No, I'm now I'm self conscious. Yeah, that was his most yards. Was his rookie year. Didn't have as many touchdowns as his max though, but he had nine think, yards his rookie who, year. Who was the oh Kerry Collins was the quarterback for the yeah. Giants. Yeah, way back then, then Eli towards the end of his career. <laughs> Eli. What a dope. <laughs> you mean future Hall of Famer Eli Manning? Oh, he I don't want to get into that with you. Whether he deserves it or not, I don't think he deserves it, but they they got to move the goalposts if they're not going to include him, though. Why? That, uh, that's my argument. is because he's like top 10 in stats in every category, and he has two Super Bowl rings. But, like, his first Super Bowl, if David Tyree doesn't plant a football to his head with sticky glue, yeah. like, he doesn't – Eli doesn't have shit. Like, <laughs> well, uh, and all, I, also, I'm a Cowboy fan, so I hate the Giants, and so I'm very, very passionate about this. Like, Eli did not win that Super Bowl. Like, he – Well, he was, he was pretty ridiculous in both of those playoff runs, though. Um. Because then he had the dime to Plaxico Burris right after that David Tyree catch. I mean, was it a dime? Plaxico was just so wide open. (laughs) Well. I could throw that pass. But here's the thing, though. Like, I'm I'm with you. Has Eli ever been a top five QB in the NFL? No. Has he ever been, like, has he even been average his whole career? No. So should he be in the Hall of Fame? No. However, we gotta move the goalposts a little. Because he checks every box. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm I'm a stickler on the Hall of Fame. Like I think that a Hall of, Hall of Famer is someone who was considered the best or top two, top three best at your position at the like during your career. And so, yeah, I don't know, Eli, whatever. No, so I. I think I think that's like he's the perfect opportunity for the NFL NFL Hall of Fame to like I said to move the goalposts um because like this is the passing era of the NFL. And so what they need to do is they need to be like we're no longer going to compare Philip Rivers and Fran Tarkenton by stats because you know there's like Jay Cutler has an argument, Matthew Stafford's going to have an argument. Uh, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be first ballot. Um, if that's what we continue to do, you know what I'm saying? Like this new wave of guys since like Drew Brees and Peyton Manning, like really changed the NFL. This new wave of guys just has such inflated stats that, uh, that they just have to change the, they have to change the formula for QBs. Um, cause Eli's like sixth in passing yards and like eighth in touchdowns or something like that. And then two Super Bowls. Like that's really freaking hard to to not have him in there unless you say, look, we're we're doing it by all pros, MVPs, how many times they made the playoffs, that kind of stuff, or yeah. how you're remember remembered. Yeah, the game of football. Yeah. So like anyway. if you're not, if you're not remembered as a great quarterback, and I don't think Eli Manning is remembered as a great quarterback. Yeah. Why would you put Why would they put him in the Hall of Fame? But that's just me. I could go on for days about that. No, no, that's that is one of my favorite arguments. Though I love I love that uh, that discussion. 
Um, okay, next question. Let's see. Okay, I like this one from Nate the Kane. Um, do we keep Lashley if the offense is in the top 15 this season? Um, yeah, I do. I honestly think Rhett Lashley could very well be the next head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah. Like, I could see that transpiring. Um, but yes, I, I like Lashley is, I mean, his first year at Auburn, they went to the national championship and like he continued to like, he stayed at Auburn for what? Three, four years. Yeah. Like I real actually like, unless it's like he gets like, I mean, he was at UConn for a year, but if you do well at Miami, like I, I think you will want to stay there for at least another year. Yeah. I'm this one kind of worries me. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Like it's So take this with a grain of salt. After we hired him, I got on the SMU uh, football subreddit. And I was just reading up on him and, you know, what their fans had to say about him. Um, and what they were saying is, like, the inside message board scoop at SMU was that Lashley was looking for a head coaching job and that it didn't materialize and that uh, – you know, then the Miami job came open and, and of course he took it because it's a great job. Um, so that, that makes me skeptical. However, that's like, you know, that's, that's rumors on rumors. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, he, but that's going to be any successful coordinator. Like, yeah. I, I think if he changes our offense around, I mean, here's the deal. If we're top 15 in offense, we're going to the orange bowl at least. Yeah, we're not going to have a top 15 offense and a top 15 defense and and only win 10 games or nine games like that's teams that, you know, those are teams that go to the national the horrible Championship. things I would do to win 10 games this year. I would do horrible things, unforgiving things. Yeah, yeah. like everyone is like uh, they, they almost forget um, like what happened last year and what's happened the last 15 years. Like I think we will, will I think I say that we go nine and three in um, the regular season and go 10 and four in like with the bowl win and everything. Um, and to do that, we are going to need a really good offense. And I think we're going to have that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going above those expectations right now, for, at least for wins. But if Rhett Lashley does do what he is brought has been brought to Miami to do. I think we get at least one more year. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I I hope so. But I mean, just to put it in context, like Alabama last year had the twentieth defense. Um, you know, so if we were if we were top fifteen both offense and defense, only teams that did that were Clemson and Ohio State. Yeah. So, um. It's you all know. on the offense. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, obviously, like, we're, we're probably going to the playoff unless – or, like, being ranked number five and in the Orange Bowl because we got thumped by Clemson in the ACC championship game, and that's the only reason we didn't get in. Um, so, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I, I would, I would say 50, 50 toss up on that one. I, I think it would more depend on the jobs that are open, um, than anything. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what if that he, Auburn job comes open? Like, that what job? Like what if Auburn comes open, you know, what if, what if they're disappointing and then they decide to part ways with Gus Malzahn, then, I mean, you got to imagine that if if we have a top 15 offense that Lashley would be a, a candidate there. Oh, absolutely. He'd be a candidate. And um, I mean, let's be real. I love Miami, but would you stay as a coordinator at Miami over head coach at Auburn? I just don't see Lashley as a guy who goes, I know he did it at UConn, but he just isn't a one and done guy to me. Yeah. yeah no, I feel you. But Anyways, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I that'd be good problems though. If we're yeah, a top oh yeah. fifteen offense, then uh, 
you know, then we can just bring in the next guy that's going to run an offense like that. So exactly. Okay. Here's from Polk Kane. Uh, Kaya stays for a senior season. How does that season end up? Oh, I've answered this question so many times. We, it, it can go both ways. I mean, yeah. does Kaya take, lead us down in Tallahassee and make that game winning drive? Does Kaya make the plays on his feet that Malik Rozier was able to make? Like, even if we do beat Pitt at the end of the year, people are, like, under the impression that if we just had to beat Pitt and we would have beat Clemson. Like, yeah. Clemson was by far the better team that year. I don't care if Kaya was the quarterback, and I love Kaya. I don't care if Rozier was the quarterback. Like, we were not beating Clemson that year. So, like— hey. What if we had Jaron Williams? Would we have won the national championship? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, I've answered this so many times, and Brad has answered this, too. I mean, yeah. like, and he always answers it like, I mean, there was, like, there's just no way that I would have come back. You're like, that was a decision that he made prior to that year. And, um, but... Yeah. Um, I was going to say the same thing as you, like for all the good, we probably, you know, who's to say, but we probably would have beat Pitt, but you know, Malik was huge for the first half of the season when we got him out in space, he made so many plays with his feet that Brad just wouldn't be capable of doing that. Uh, I mean, I, I think we'd still probably be around that 10 and three mark, maybe 11 and two, um, but we would have just lost to different teams, you know, different situations. Uh, it, it's just too hard to say. I, I really, I mean, Brad it was the better player and the better quarterback, but that our team and our offensive scheme was just flawed. Um, and they needed a guy like Malik Rozier who was a little bit more, um, like he had to make things happen sometimes on his own and unconventionally because he was not as good of a quarterback as Brad Kaya. Like, does Daryl Langham catch that crazy catch against Georgia Tech if Kai's there? Like, yeah, I don't know. People, I'm I'm with you though. I I yeah. think I think it's a moot point. I, you know, I I think that team was. I mean, we really won by the skin of our teeth in a lot of games. When even when Malik played really well, um, you know, I I think that season all the good I would mostly attribute to Mark Richt, honestly, Mark Richt and Manny Diaz. Um, I I think it was a tremendous coaching job above all else. Um, Because I I don't think that team was, I don't think that team lacked the flaws that we have now, the culture problems and the entitlement and stuff like that. I I just think that, I mean, I've said it before. I think Mark Richt kind of gold plated a turd for two years. And uh, Manny was a big part of that on defense. Yeah. I mean, th- just that 2017 season was like the stars aligned for those first 10 games. And, and I just, we got sorry. lucky as hell yeah. in some of those games. That's what, like we were good, like when Notre Dame and Virginia Tech came, but like we got lucky as hell in some of those games. Yeah. And to be fair, I guess our, our defense, I would say our defense probably had more talent than the last few years. Um, our defensive backfield was loaded. I mean, we had Malik Young for half the year. We had Sheldrick Redwine. We had Jaqu- Jaquan Johnson. Um, I mean, so many freaking studs. And then, uh, you know, our tackles were amazing, obviously, with McIntosh and Norton. We had... Uh, Jeez, I can't think of his name. What's the major Trent nine? Thomas. What's his name? Oh, Chad Thomas. Yeah, we had Chad Thomas on the edge. We had well, Trent I Harris. mean, the defense wasn't just – I mean, because we returned guys like Jaquan and Redwine and, you know, some – and we had Gerald Willis the next year. But, like, yeah. it, we just – we led the country in turnovers on defense in 2017. We led the country in sacks per game. Like, the defense just executed and made more plays for us. Like, the past few years, we've, like, held teams to – um, you know, small margin of points and low number of yards, but we're not getting the amount of turnovers. And that is what some of those turnovers just gave us the momentum to win a lot of those games. Yeah, I'm with you. 
Um, 